Hey, what's up? Alex here. Following up from my previous video where I talked about how Shelly Smart Relay is able to control saw luminaire lights or basically any dimmable lights, many people are still very confused on how Shelly Relay works. So I'm going to do a very impromptu video to help you better understand everything. Okay, in my previous video, I have shown up to here. So I have a Shelly Smart Demon Relay and connect to this bulb. This is actually just a IKEA dimmable bulb or you can just pretend this as your saw luminaire lights. So when this is wired to here, I connect to the live, the neutral, and the load, which is basically to this bulb. Okay? And when, when you connect to the app itself, you are able to turn on and turn off already. Okay? And you are able to adjust the brightness this way. Okay? Very easy. If you want to pair this with a smart switch like the Akara switch, you don't have to wire the switch to the relay. Okay, you just need to power on the switch. That means you just wire in the live. Okay, neutral is op optional for this Z1 Pro switch. Then you are able to control the uh, Akara switch with the Shelly relay on the app itself already. But the beauty of having Shelly relay is you don't have to go with smart switches. In fact, it's better to go with conventional switches like this. This is the Schneider Electric Momentary switch. And it is able to do a lot more. And another pros of having such uh, conventional switches is usually they come with a whole suite of matching uh, power sockets, data points, everything. So aesthetically, you can have everything one suite, okay? Instead of smart switches company, they only develop smart switches and you can't find matching sockets and data points, everything. Okay, so now I am just going to wire this uh, conventional switch to the relay and you'll be able to see a lot more features and capabilities. Okay, to wire in the switch, you have one live and this one is a switch wire. Switch wire, of course, connect to S1 over at the relay. Then the other one is going to live. It's all joined to this connector. Okay, another one benefit of doing conventional switches is you don't need neutral wire coming to the switch layer. Okay. Later, I'll explain more in terms of the placement of the Shelly relays. Okay, I'm going to power on this. Okay, now the Shelly relay has been wired to the conventional switch. So oh, when you go to the app itself, you go to settings, you go to input output settings. Okay, so if this is a traditional on and off switch, you will have to choose this. If not, if it's this a momentary switch, then it goes under the category of button. Okay, so this is just settings. One of the settings is one button dimming control, push the to toggle, that means I push, it will on and off the lights already. Then you also have the capability to hold to dim. Okay, once I do a hold, okay, it will dim down and once you press and hold again, it will dim up to increase the brightness. Okay, let me show you a demo. Okay, so this is increasing. Okay, if I press and hold again, Okay, you can see the lights being dimmed down okay, to 1% right now. Okay, do again, press and hold. It's going to increase the brightness slowly, increase, increase. Okay, from the camera, maybe you might not be able to see a whole lot of difference in terms of the uh, brightness. But from here, you can see the slider in terms of the percentage. Again, I want to stress that all of this is done through a setting okay, inside the Shelly app. You can of course achieve this using HA automation rules, but you need to configure and write a lot of automations over there. But instead, Shelly has it inbuilt into this as a settings. So it saves a lot of effort to do all this automation configuration. And once the Shelly relay is being interfaced to Home Assistant, here are the list of triggers it's able to do. Things like your single push, double push, triple push, and even your long push, which is your press and hold. So you can do a lot of these kind of automation rules with all these different triggers. Okay, so let's say you don't want this button to just control this light itself. You want it to control another device together. So pretend this is another smart device inside your smart home system. Okay, this is just a Philips Hue bulb to simulate that. Okay, so over at your automation rules, of course, you can add in the rule to whenever it's being pressed to toggle the other uh, smart home device. Okay, so if I press, okay, then this one will go off, this one will go on. 
Okay, but of course, if the current state of this is both at the same, okay, let's say I turn off this bulb. Okay, once you press, then both of course will happen together. The reason is whenever the light is being connected to the relay and to the switch, it will always perform the actions together. Okay, to, in order to prevent that from happening, you have to play around with another setting on the Shelly app itself, and this is what. Uh, we are very familiar with Akra switches is being able to do this decouple mode. So if we set the settings to this detach mode, okay, that means whenever you press the relay right now, it will not affect the lights that is being wired to the switch right now. So it is just going to control whatever you set on your automation group. Okay, so if this is what you want to achieve, then you do the decouple and you can press once and control everything that you want in your smart home system, including this light. Since the Shelly Demon Relay has an S1 and S2, so potentially you can connect the S2 to another switch button. So I'm going to replace this switch with a two-gang switch, okay, and later on you can see what else it's able to do. Okay, so now I have finished wiring a two-gang conventional switch to the Shelly Demon Relay, which has S1 and S2. Okay, back at the settings, I go back to the settings where one button dimming control. Okay, it will just toggle this. Okay, then press and hold, it will dim up. Then press and hold, it will dim down as per normal from just now having it wired to one gang switch. Another setting that I want to show is you can even do something like a preset. So on button double push, you can set a default brightness. Okay, right now I set it at 7%. You can always set a different percentage level and save it. Okay, so now you have another action for double push. It can go to like a, a default setting. Okay, there are also other kind of settings that you can play around here, like the button fade rate. Okay, uh, how fast the light will glow up, glow down. And you can set minimum brightness, okay, min minimum and maximum brightness over here, the transition duration as well. Okay, so for this button, very straightforward, it's just controlling this light. The second button that is wired in as well, this typically becomes like your any other wireless buttons inside your smart home system, okay, where you can configure push once, double push, triple push, and push and hold. So it can control any devices in your smart home platform. Okay, so on the configuration, you can always set all these different gesture trigger for the second button now. For single push, what happens for double push, and of course your press and hold. Then here are the actions. Okay, if it's single press, then it will just toggle this bulb, okay, uh, on and off. Then if it's double press, then it will just switching on or off the AC. Alright, so now I'm just going to do a quick demo to prove that everything works. This is a smart bulb, but you can just pretend this as any smart appliance and the AC is over there. This is the saw luminaire light. Okay, so first button as per normal, it will just toggle the saw luminaire light, press and hold, it will dim down, dim up. Okay, so the second button is where you can control anything in your smart home system. I've con configured this to press once, it will just toggle this on and off. Press once, okay, press again on and off. Now I do a double press, it should switch on my AC. Okay, double press. Okay, you should be able to see that the aircon is now switched on, the band is open. Now I press, double press again on this switch. It should switch it off. Okay, wait a moment. Okay, it's switching off, the band is slowly moving back. Alright, so this is just a two gang conventional switch from Schneider Electric. This is just $20 should be around there, but you can always get even a cheaper conventional switch. This is well within less than $10. All right, so you might ask, so what happens if I want to put in a three gang switch? So what happens next? So let's say if you have a third button over here, then you can just put in like this mini Gen 4 relay. This is only about $20. Just wire this over to the switch itself. Okay, the button. Imagine this is a three gang. So you now have two relays behind a three gang switch. Okay, so to conclude, a one gang conventional switch like this, when paired together with a mini Gen 4 relay, uh, this is well within $10. This is about $25. 
Together, you will have a smart wireless button which is able to do triggers like single push, double push, triple push, and press and hold. Okay, literally control anything within your smart home platform. And just look at how small is this mini relay, okay, compared to the normal size relay. Okay, this will definitely be difficult to put behind the switch. This can easily stuff behind the switch, okay, even if you didn't have a very big cutout. It's important to understand that it doesn't matter where you place the relay, whether it's beside the light or beside the switch, as long as it's wired correctly within the circuit, then it's fine. Okay, so you can place it inside the four ceiling, inside carpentry works, inside partition, okay, whether it is a much bigger switch cutout, some of the places where I went to, I can see very big cutout. Okay, you can always stuff this behind the switch. Of course, you pick a location where it is convenient for any sort of maintenance work that is required. Okay, online there is a lot of wiring diagrams of how to do the wiring. So let's say if I go to Gen 4, I go to Demon Gen 4. Okay, so you can see all the different kind of situation if you want to do a two-way switch. Okay, Gen 4 push button. Okay, depending on what kind of scenario you want to achieve, you should be able to find the wiring diagram, just pass it to the electrician and he or she should be able to figure that out. Okay, I'm going to answer some of the very commonly asked questions. So, can it work without neutral? Yes, you just need to purchase an additional neutral bypass. Okay, just Google search for the bypass. It will be wired somewhere at a light source where it's able to bypass away the neutral. So you don't need the neutral wire, not necessary, as long as you got a bypass installed. Okay, another interesting thing is you don't have to wire to the switch itself in terms of the neutral wire. You can see the switches doesn't have any neutral wire. So let's say if you put this very near to the light, let's say in the four ceiling, the light will always have a neutral. You can always loop the neutral over to the relay itself, okay? Then the neutral wire can stop there, okay? You don't have to new wire a neutral all the way to the switch end. Okay, another popular question is whether this setup, this solution, is it going to be supported by Sol Luminaire? Is it going to affect the warranty? Um, best is to check with them, but I can understand from a business standpoint that they are not going to honor the warranty. My guess is high chance, okay, it will affect the warranty if you are not going with what they support, which is using the LTEC solution. Okay, so I hope that after this video, it gives you a better idea of what you can do with the Shelly Relay, especially when it's paired together with a conventional switch rather than going to a smart switch like the Akara ones. Of course, you can still go with a smart switch, just that it's so much easier because it's within the Shelly app settings to do a lot of the features and capabilities that you have to use automation rules to configure on a smart switch. If you still have any questions, just leave it in the comments below and I'll try to answer them as much as possible. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.